guys, it's Robin from Mars Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This week we are going to be working on one of my UFOs, or one similar to my UFOs. If you don't know, a UFO is an unfinished object. Basically, I know from the quilting world, and I think the knitters use it also, but it's a project you started, and then for whatever reason you stuck it in a, sh in a drawer or on a shelf somewhere and you stopped working on it could be because it got to a point where you didn't know what to do or didn't know how to do it or you just had enough of it. This is a UFO but it's not mine. When I bought a mystery box online one day uh, several years ago it had a whole bunch of different fabrics in it. I actually bought two mystery boxes and in one of them was uh, seven of these stocking blocks. They weren't sewn together and they were all different sizes, but I think they were from a swap, and I'll show you why. Well, first of all, they're all different sizes. But in the seam allowance on this one, it says Lynn Clark. So I think Lynn Clark made this block. And they probably swapped them out with other people. There were three of them like this. And like I said, there were seven. So to make nine, I made two of them like this. This is my block. I looked online thinking I could find the pattern because I kind of thought where it might have come from since I know who I bought the, I know what website I bought the, the uh, mystery box from and it was a quilting board so I kind of thought that maybe it came from the quilting board. I found different stocking patterns but not one quite like this. So what I did is I just flipped it over and I reverse engineered it. I measured, I, I lifted up the seam allowances and spread them out and I measured each section and I came up with a pattern. And of course there goes my iron because it always goes off. This is the basic pattern that I came up with. And after I made it, like I said, all the blocks were different sizes so I had to trim them all down to fit into this this quilt top is going to be different than any one I make after that because a lot of the blocks are smaller. As an unfinished block, this one will be eight and a half inches wide and ten and a half inches tall. It's obviously a rectangular block. It's really simple. It's just made up of a few pieces. What I'll probably do is I'll probably take a picture of this and put it in my in a blog post on my uh, rsislandcrafts.blogspot.com link down below in the description box. So if you want to refer to it later, or you can just put this video in a playlist. So in case you need to make it bigger though, you'll have a picture of it from my blog. But before we get to making it, you're getting a sneak peek of this before anyone else does. Let's take a look at these blocks. Since there's nine of them, I just did three rows of three. It could be a table topper or a wall hanging. I guess you could use it for a little kid's quilt or a doll quilt, but I'm, I'm thinking mostly a wall hanging. I went ahead and sashed each block, each row, and all around the outside with um, an inch and a half, just plain white. They used, everyone used a different white, so it's just really not going to matter. Once it's all done quilted, it, it'll all be fine. And then I decided to use this is little bells and I decided to use that for my binding because I thought with all the greens in it it'd be nice to have a nice green binding and my other UFO for this month just to give you a quick sneak peek before we get into the blocks was the table runner so this one's all quilted I quilted this one in just uh, I think they call it organic quilting where you you sew uh, straight lines but they're not actually straight some of them might be an inch apart some of them might be an inch and a half Then this is what the back looks like. So my two UFOs for the month are getting pretty close to being done. At least this one is. Alright, back to the stocking block that we're going to be doing today. This is actually a really simple block. And I can see how it would work really well for swapping. Because, like I said, all the blocks were different sizes. So to get them all the right size, I just trimmed a little from the top and a little from the bottom and it worked out really well. And you can still, you can take a little bit off. You don't want to go too far on the sides. Hopefully they're close to the eight and a half inch wide. I noticed most of the problem was in the height because you're going to lose some of the white. You don't want to lose too much there. 
I wanted to use a two inch square for these, but it ended up being they used a one and three quarters, and I was afraid that if I used a two inch, I would lose too much of the toe. The heel wouldn't batter too much, but I wanted to have the toes looking like the other socks. So here are all my pieces. You can use any color for the background as you want. White seemed to work really well against any of the Christmas fabrics you used. If you didn't use Christmas fabrics, I guess you could just call these regular socks instead of Christmas stockings. But you're going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the squares. And we're going to do the stitch and flip method where you stitch here and then you flip it over and there you go. So these are your basic pieces. Cuff, two stockings, and then you have your three squares and a background. For the wall hanging I'm making just using my Christmas fabrics, I decided for some reason I'm making eight stockings. Mostly because I found eight fabrics that I like and eight's an even number, so it seemed good. I could always add to it if I want. I don't know if I'm going to try making a table runner or another wall hanging, or I might just turn it into a giant quilt and add different blocks to it. But I just did assembly line sewing. I took this long 8 by uh, 5 inch part of the stocking and I stitched it to the cuffs. And I just went ahead. Really simple. Press it to any side you want. I ended up pressing it to the cuff just because it's easier to push the iron across that way. So those are the fabrics I chose. And then I have one more I'll show you. After I sewed the cuff to the main body of the fabric. I went ahead and I added the heel. So now the heel was just our square with the diagonal line. You want to just make sure and refer back to the pattern to make sure you don't get your heel, you don't have your diagonal going the wrong way. Now my tip for here is, I'm not sure if you can see it, but here's my pencil line. But when I stitched it, I stitched it one thread on the outside of the pencil line towards the part you're going to cut off. That way when you fold this over, when you fold it over it takes up about one or two threads. And then this way it's nice and even to this part. So when you take your scissors, before you do any type of cutting you want to make sure you iron it over and make sure you're going past your lines because if you have it a little bit off because you got your line crooked or your stitching crooked you won't have an even line going through here. So I pressed all mine over and make sure. And then what you're going to end up doing after that, and then after that you're just going to cut this piece off. Now you can use a rotary cutter and a ruler. You need to have it about a quarter inch past, your basic seam allowance. But I have no problem with just go ahead and taking it, eyeballing it, and whacking it off. And that way you could leave it on if you wanted to, but this way you don't have that extra bulk in your block when you go to quilt it. Now I take these little cut off pieces and I add them into this little container. I'm saving all my triangles from the flipping stitches that are too small because when you do it, when you do this, if you wanted to, before you cut it off, you can sew a half inch away and then cut in between the two blocks and you can have two half, you can have a bonus half square triangle. But this one's just too small. It's only one and three quarters inches. For me, it's too small. So I just toss it into this bucket and I'm saving all these are my little pieces I cut off and also I'm saving it when when you put your um, bindings together and you sew them on the bias on the diagonal. Anytime I make a binding and I cut off those little pieces I save them. I'm going to make a ticker tape quilt using the triangles. So this is the right side of our block. The main part of our stocking we have the cuff, the leg, and the heel. And the next thing I do is I take the 4x4 four four square and then I put my two corners on for the toes and I trim them off and then I sew the background onto that part of the toe and the last step would just be to flip these over and stitch them together. Now what I would do is I would make all of my blocks first then I would go ahead and take my 12 and a half inch ruler and I would see what my, my main blocks measure at. 
sorry about the light. If they all measure at the exact, oh, what is it, eight and a half by 10? If they all measure eight and a half by 10 and a half, then I would just trim them and make sure they're all nice. There's no little extra bits. But if you have one that's just a little bit smaller, maybe it's eight and a quarter by 10 and a quarter, you want to trim all your blocks down to that size so that they're all equal. See, I told you it was a real easy block and it'd be great for swapping. I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching all of my stockings together. And as soon as I get it into whatever I think it's going to be for a wall hanging or something, I'll go ahead and post another video so you guys can see what it looks like. Now for next week's video, keeping in this stocking theme, I found another pattern, which is a, it's a Christmas stocking, but it has something a little bit different about it. And I'm going to keep that a little bit of a surprise for right now. But if you come back next Friday, we'll make a variation of this block. And I think you might like that. So if you like these kind of videos, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you ring that little bell, YouTube will tell you next time I put a video up. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Happy crafting, and I'll see you next week. Bye.